Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You may have seen a false proof that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Many people have asked me to cover this question because it's circulating on a lot of sites and there is a lot of confusion about it. Where is the mistake? Let's go through this supposed proof line by line. So let me just zoom in and read out every single step. Prove that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. We know 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 minus 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. This equals the square root of the square of the term 4 minus 9 over 2, and then we have a plus 9 over 2. This is equal to the square root of 4 squared minus 2 times 4 times 9 over 2 plus the square of 9 over 2, and then we add 9 over 2. Let me scroll to the next step. This will be equal to the square root of 16 minus 36 plus the square of 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. This is equal to the square root of minus 20 plus the square of 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. This is equal to the square root of 25 minus 45 plus the square of 9 over 2. Then we add 9 over 2. This is equal to the square root of 5 squared minus 2 times 5 times 9 over 2 plus the square of 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. This is equal to the square root of the square of 5 minus 9 over 2. Then we add 9 over 2. And this is equal to 5 minus 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. And this is equal to 5. And the left hand side was 2 plus 2. So we have 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. And this is proven. So where's the mistake? Let's go through the steps in reverse order. So let's just start out easy. Let's take a look at these last two lines of the proof. In order to do this detective work, we want to make sure that the top line will imply the bottom line. So is it true that 5 minus 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2 is equal to 5? Well, minus 9 over 2 will cancel with 9 over 2. So this is equal to 5, and this step is actually correct. Now let's go one line up. Is it true that this top line will imply this bottom line? Well, we can just go ahead and check that, and it is true that the square root of the square root of 5 minus 9 over 2 will all simplify to be 5 minus 9 over 2, so this step is in fact true. This is not where the mistake is. So let's scroll through the proof. We now want to make sure this top line will imply this bottom line, and all we're doing in these two steps is factoring. So there is not going to be a mistake in this step. Now let's scroll one more step up. Here all we're doing is saying that 25 is equal to 5 squared, no problem. And then 45 can be written as 2 times 5 times 9 over 2. No problem here. This step is true. Now let's scroll on the proof. What's going on in this step? Here we just have minus 20 being rewritten as 25 minus 45, no problem here. Let's scroll to the step before it. Again, this is a simple step. 16 minus 36 is equal to minus 20, no problem here. So we scroll one more step up. In this step, all we're doing is some arithmetic. 4 squared is equal to 16, and 2 times 4 times 9 over 2 is equal to 36. So this step is true. Let's now scroll to the next step. What's going on between these two steps? All we're doing is expanding the binomial in the top line to the bottom line, and this expansion is correct. No problem here. We now go one more step up. Is it true that 4 minus 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2 is equal to the square root of the square of 4 minus 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2? No. This step is where the mistake is. This is the step that is false. So this false proof barely takes off because the mistake happens very early. But if that's all there were to this false proof, there wouldn't be so much confusion. Many students are wondering, why is this step actually false? So let's go through this in more detail. We have 4 minus 9 over 2 which is equal to minus 1 over 2. If we take the square root of the square of the quantity 4 minus 9 over 2, what do we get? 
we need to take the square root of the square of minus 1 half. The square of minus 1 half is equal to 1 over 4. And now we have the square root of 1 over 4. And that is only equal to positive 1 over 2. Now, if you were to do the same thing with 5 minus 9 over 2, you would end up with a little different result. 5 minus 9 over 2 is equal to 1 half. And if we take the square root of the square of this group term, we will end up with the square root of the square of 1 over 2. This will be equal to the square root of 1 over 4. And this is, in fact, equal to 1 over 2. So in some cases, we have the square root of the square of something being the opposite of what we started with. And in other cases, it will be equal to. So why is that? In many students' minds, the confusion begins when solving equations like x squared is equal to 4. One solution to this equation is x is equal to 2 because 2 squared is equal to 4. But this equation also has another solution, x is equal to minus 2 because the square of minus 2 is also equal to 4. This leads a student to wonder, is the square root of 4 equal to plus or minus 2? Does it have two values? Well, no. When we write the square root of 4, it is only equal to plus 2. And let me give some justification for this convention. Let's start out with the graph that y is equal to x squared. We have a parabola. Now, every single y value will correspond to two x values. If y is equal to 4, we would have x is equal to plus or minus 2. Now, let's imagine we're trying to graph the inverse of this function. Let's imagine we're doing it by reflecting this graph about the line y is equal to x. We would end up with a parabola like this. Now, could this inverse that we have graphed be an inverse function? Well, what do we need for a function? We need every single x value to correspond to one y value. Now, in this case, this is not true. We have x values corresponding to two y values. This green graph will not pass the vertical line test. This is not a function, and this would correspond to the square root of 4 is equal to plus or minus 2. But this would not be the graph of a function. It is very important that we have functions so that we can use concepts like continuity, differentiation. These are the things that have a lot of theorems written about them. So it would seem we have a problem, but mathematicians have come up with a fix. Imagine you have a tree with many branches. In this case, we have a graph with two branches. We can just prune this tree and make it one branch. So if we cut off one branch of this graph, we will have every single x value correspond to exactly one y value. So let's trim off the bottom branch of this graph. We now have the graph of a function. And this is written as the square root of x. It's also known as the principal square root function. This is a convention that we just have one y value for every single x value. So in this case, the square root of 4 needs to correspond to just one y value, which is 2. So let's apply this principle back to our problem. If we have the square root of 1 squared, this is equal to 1. If we have the square root of the square of 1 half, this is equal to 1 half. If we have the square root of 2 squared, this is equal to 2. But what would happen if we take the square root of negative 1, the quantity squared? This is equal to plus 1. Whenever we take the square root of the square of something that is negative, we end up with the opposite of that negative number. So we have a general rule that the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. So bringing this lesson back to the false proof, in one step, we have the square root of the square of 5 minus 9 over 2. But 5 minus 9 over 2 is equal to 1 half, which is greater than 0. So the square root and the square term can cancel out between the steps. But when we apply the same thing to 4 minus 9 over 2, 4 minus 9 over 2 is less than 0. So the square root and the square term do not cancel out. And that's where the mistake is in the proof of 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.